Unix commands. Now remember back then we did a series on the command line interface among the many things I covered in that three part series. I actually also mentioned Unix operating systems. Of course, I'm talking about those particular versions that you interact with using the command line. Today, we're going to look at one particular command, and that is the chmod command. You're watching yet another random Wednesday episode on 0612 TV. This is 0612 TV. Welcome aboard. Hello and welcome back to another random Wednesday episode. Today, we're going to talk about chmod. Now, first of all, what is this command? What does it mean and what does it do? chmod actually stands for change mode and is a Unix command used to set file permissions so that different groups of people can have different kinds of access to a particular file. Now, honestly, the reason why I'm talking about this in the first place is not because I think this is very applicable to you. To be honest, it probably isn't. If you are dealing with Unix systems on a day-to-day -day basis, you'll already know about this. And if you don't, you probably won't be anytime soon. The reason why I want to discuss this particular command is because its syntax is very interesting. If you are new and learning Unix systems, you might get a little bit confused about you know what the whole command means. Personally, I think the implementation of the command takes a very innovative approach to solving this problem, which is why I thought I'll share it in greater detail. As mentioned earlier, the chmod command actually lets you set file permissions, in particular read, write, and execute permissions for individual files. You can also set these settings independently for different groups of people, yourself, the group you belong to, as well as public, that is everyone. The way you do this is you say chmod, three numbers in a row, and then the file name of the file you want to modify. Of course, instead of a file name, you can also specify a directory or folder name and it will change the permissions of that particular folder. Now, what I've just shown you here is just the simplest way to use chmod. In fact, there are a number of other settings you can stick into the command to make it do even more complex stuff. But today, we're not going to go there. We're only going to take a look at the basics of this command. So this is where things get fun. Now, what we see so far, we generally can understand chmod just means I want to call that command and the file name of course says I want to apply the command to that particular file. So no difficulty there. The question is these numbers in the center. I'm going to have to use three numbers to somehow specify permissions for that particular file. This is where things start to get a little complicated but also very interesting. Let's take a closer look at these three numbers. Each one of these numbers can run from 0 to 7. In other words, each one of these are three bit binary numbers. Yes, that's actually how deep we are going, but it's pretty important to see things this way because they'll help us understand how this command works. I'm not gonna go into too much detail about number systems and converting between them. So if you're interested to find out more, I did a series a very long time ago called How to Count. So essentially each one of these digits is represented by three bits. These bits are actually used as flags. In particular, each bit is actually a switch. When it's zero, it means off, and when it's one, it means on. But off and on for what? In fact, each of these bits actually represent the individual permissions. In particular, read, write, and execute. So essentially, what you're doing is you can individually switch these on or off. If you actually switch on the read bit, then you'll have one zero zero. Conversely, if I want read and write access, I'm going to switch on the leftmost bit and the second bit. This translates to the binary number 6. So essentially for every possible combination of binary digits, you can actually map that to a decimal number. And to find out what the decimal number actually represents, you want to look at the individual bits and see what you've switched on and what you've switched off. In other words, 0 means no access to anything. No reading, no writing, no executing. 1 means execute only. 2 means write only, 3 means write and execute, 4 means read only, 5 means read and execute, 6 means read and write, while 7 means you have access to everything, read, write and execute. To me, that's pretty innovative to actually use the individual bits to act as flags. 
but converting that to an actual number and using that as a parameter for the chmod command. So right, now we know what the individual numbers mean. But then, what does it mean when we have to put three digits back to back? You see, as mentioned earlier, different groups of people can get different types of access to that same file. Now the reason why we need to do this is more often than not, a Unix system might be set up as a server of some kind. When it's a server of some kind, obviously you need to be able to restrict permissions. Let's say you have a web server, you want the general public to be able to see pages, but obviously not modify them. Of course, you also want to be able to block out users from seeing certain files. These files might be used for your background purposes, things like scripts. Then of course, you want to give right access to people like administrators and other people actually running the site. That is why different user groups need different permissions and all of these permissions must be set up properly for your entire environment to run correctly. And that is why we need three parameters for chmod. Now the ordering of the parameters of course matter. The first digit means yourself. How much permissions do you want to give yourself for that particular file? Then the second digit is for people in the same user group as you. Now, in Unix file systems, you can actually group people, for example, administrators and normal users. So these are two separate groups that can get permissions on a group level, which means everyone placed in that group will automatically inherit some of the permissions. The third digit represents the public. What kind of permissions do you want to set for the public? The phenomena we'll normally see is the largest number goes to the left and it starts going down. Of course, it kind of makes sense. The owner of the file should get maximum permissions, they can do whatever they like to the file. Then as you move on, the general public should get the least access. And that ladies and gentlemen is how you use chmod. That pretty much wraps it up for this episode. I hope this has given you a little bit more of an insight into how you know certain things are done. Despite the rather steep learning curve required to actually master this particular command, you realize that once you know how to do this, you can do this operation very, very quickly. In fact, much faster than if you were to try to do the same things using a GUI. But that's me done for the day. If you have any comments, queries, or suggestions, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. Don't forget to check out the official Twitter account for this channel at twitter.com slash 0612tv. As always, I appreciate every like, favorite, and subscription you give me. But until next time, you're watching 0612TV.